Good day, Grade 10s. Welcome back to this next lesson in Finance and Growth and Statistics. Basically, what we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to go through a couple of exam type questions or exam questions on finance and growth. And then if we have time, we will move on to... I'm going to get there. Um, we will move on to statistics. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, it says Tando has 4,500 Rand in his savings account. The bank pays him a compound interest of 4.25% per annum. Come calculate the amount Tando will receive if he decides to withdraw the money after 30 months. Okay, so first of all, we know that A is equal to P1 plus I to the power of N. Okay, because this is compound interest, it says it's compound interest. The principal is the amount that he's starting with, so let's just write these variables down A, P, I, and N. So the principal is 4,500 because that's the amount he's starting with. His interest is 4.25% per annum, so it's going to be 425 Remember, we have to divide by 100 to get it into decimal, so it becomes 0, 0, 0.425. And now the N is interesting because this is compounded per annum and this is 30 months. So what we could do is we could divide this by 12 to see how many years that is. So let's go to our calculator. And I'm sorry, I thought I had hidden this, but obviously not. So let's just quickly fix that. There we go. Oh, now I need to go back to the calculator. Okay. So, no, oh, doesn't like that. Okay, fine. So now I switch it on. So we've got 30 divided by 12 equals, oh, it's not going to work at all. 30 divided by 12, 12 equals, 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 why won't it equals? There we go. Five over two, which is two and a half years. So we're going to make this in two and a half years, okay? So now let's substitute this into this equation. So we've got 4,500 times a one plus 0, 0,0425 all to the power of two and a half. Right. So let's pop that into our calculator and see if we can get it to work without so much of effort as last time. So we've got 4,500 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.04 0 .4 to five close bracket to the power of two point five equals and that's four thousand nine hundred ninety three Rand and forty seven cents. Remember when we're talking about money, especially we always round off to two decimal places because that's how many cents we have in a Rand. So it's four nine nine three point four seven. So it's four thousand nine hundred ninety three Rand and forty seven cents. And that is how much Tanda will have in his savings account after two and a half years. OK. Let's try another example. It says the following advertisement appeared with regards to buying a bicycle on a higher purchase agreement. Now remember higher purchase is actually simple interest. So let's just write that down. A is equal to P1 plus IN. And remember your formula R on your formula sheets. You don't have to remember this, okay? But you do need to remember that higher purchase is a simple interest sum. So they told you the purchase price was 5999 they then told you the required deposit was 600 and then they made it easy so you didn't need to know that higher purchase was simple because they said the loan term was 18 months at 8% per annum simple interest. 
Okay, so it says calculate the monthly amount the person has to budget for in order to pay for the bicycle. Okay, so do you agree the first thing that we have to do is we have to subtract the 6,000 Rand because that is coming off the original purchase price. So we've got 5,999 and we have to subtract 600 Rand because that's our deposit. We've already paid that. Right, so we'll have 5,399 Rand that we're going to be paying off over 18 months, over 18 months. Okay, now we know that A is equal to P, 1 plus I, N. In this case, the, it's the amount is going to be the total amount that we have to pay off, which is 5,399 Rand. So A is 5,399 Rand. The I is the interest rate, which is going to be 0, 0, 8. How did I get that? I took my 8 and I divided by 100 to get it into decimal, which becomes 0, 0, 8. My N, now please remember that this is per annum, and they're talking 18 months. So what do I need to do? I need to change that 18 months to years. And 18 months is equal to one and a half years, okay? So N is gonna be one comma five. So now I can substitute this into this formula and work out what my monthly payments are gonna be. So let's do that. So we go, a is equal to P1 plus IN. So therefore, that's 5,399 is equal to P1 plus 0, 0, 8 times by 1, 5. Okay. So now what we do is we're going to divide both sides by this. So... Let's first work that out. So we're going to go 5399 divided by bracket 1 plus bracket 0.08 multiplied by 1 point five close bracket equals and there's gonna be a syntax error. Let's just put another bracket there. Yep. And then press equals. And that works out to be four thousand mm, that can't be right. What have I done wrong? What have I done wrong? What have I done wrong? Is calculate the monthly amount okay that a person has to budget for in order to pay for the bicycle. Oh, I made a silly mistake. I made a silly mistake. Let me show you what I did. What we need to do, <laughs> sorry, is we need to work out how much they're going to pay in total on that and then divide by the number of months. Okay, so in fact, sorry, your principal is going to be your 5,399. What we're going to do is work out the amount of money we'll owe for that period and then divide by the 18 months and that will tell us how much they paid per month. Okay, so let's do that. So we're going to go a is equal to 5399 times by 1 plus 0, 0, 8 times 1, 5. Okay, so let's do that. Sorry about that. I don't know where my head is. Um, so we're going to go 1 plus bracket 0, 0, 0, 8 times 1.5 close bracket equals and then multiply that by 5399 and that equals 
prices. 6,046 and 88 Rand. 6,046 and 88 Rand. So the total amount is 6,046 Rand and 88 cents. We now can divide that by 18. If we divide that by 18, we can see the monthly repayments are 335 rand and 94 cents. 335 rand and 94 cents. So that is 335 rand and 94 cents. Okay, now it says how much interest does one have to pay over the full term? Well, that is just the 6,046 and 88 cents minus the 5,399. So it's 6,046 comma 88 minus 5,399, that's an 8 and an 8, 16 minus 9 is 7, 13 minus 9 is 4, 9 minus 3 is 6, and you are left with 647 rand and 88 cents. So that is how much interest the person will have to pay over the full term. It's the total amount that they pay minus the amount that was left over after they paid the deposit. Okay, right, let's look at another question. Now, remember that we haven't just done finance, we did finance and um, remember just finance and growth. And one of the things we discussed was um, interest rates and also exchange rates. So we're gonna talk about exchange rates now. It says the following information is given. One ounce, okay, which is a weight, is equal to 28,35 grams, okay? And one dollar is equal to 8.79. We wish one dollar was equal to 8.79. It says calculate the rand value of one kilogram gold bar, okay? If one ounce of gold is worth 978 rand, 78 dollars and 34 cents. Okay, so one ounce, is equal to 978 rand and 34 cents. Okay, but do you agree that one ounce is 28,35 grams? So we've got 28,35 grams is equal to 978,34 dollars. Okay, you with me? So 28,35 grams is equal to 978 comma three four so do you agree we can work out what one kilogram is okay or better still we can work out what one gram no let's work out what one kilogram is but the easiest way to do that <clears throat> is to divide both sides by 28 comma three five to find out what one gram is okay so do you agree that one gram 35. Okay, so one gram is going to be equal to, so we need a calculator, 978, oh, let's try again, 978.34 divided by 28.35. Equals. Okay, so what we're saying is that 28,35 grams of gold, which is one ounce, costs is valued at 978 and 34, 978 dollars and 34 cents. So one gram of gold is, mm, I wasn't looking, sorry, is 34,51 dollars. It is 34,51 dollars. So do you agree that a thousand grams is going to be whatever this is multiplied by a thousand? So we're going to multiply this number by a thousand to get a thousand grams. Whoopsie, delete. A thousand. So that is 34,509 and 35 cents. 34,509 and 35 cents. 34,509 and 35 cents. And why 1,000 grams? Because 1,000 grams is one kilogram, right? But now, which is one kilogram, 
This is in dollars, but we know that one dollar is equal to eight rand seventy nine. So to get this into rands, what do we need to do? We need to multiply this by eight comma seven nine, and then we'll have the answer of how much one kilogram of gold will equal. Okay, so we're going to take this answer and we're going to multiply it by 8.79 and it's going to give me 303,316. 303,303, 337, 16. Okay, no, that's not right. There's a three missing, I think. Three or three, yeah, that's right. There's a three missing. Sorry, just a second. I need to Sorry, guys, I'm still a bit sick. Okay, so in other words, one kilogram of gold weighs or has a mass, is worth in rands, 303,337 rand and 16 cents. It's not bad for one kilogram of gold. Right, so let's move on. Okay, so now a different question. It says 10,000, please remember grade 10s. These are all questions that have been taken out of old exam paper questions, okay? Old exams for grade 10, okay? Either um, set by the department or mostly set by the department as exemplars or as um, basic papers that everybody can write. Okay, now this time it says it's a bit different. Okay. Okay, this is interesting. It says 10,000 Rand is deposited into a new savings account on the 1st of January 2010. Okay, so I'm going to teach you something new here. It's not strictly in the grade 11, grade 10 curriculum, but this question does come out of an old grade 10 exam paper. So I'm going to teach it to you, okay? So the way this works is the equation is it's compounded. So the equation is A is equal to P1 plus I over N to the power of N. And I'll explain it to you now. Okay, um, it says 10,000 Rand is deposited into the new savings account. So, ten, so P is obviously your 10,000. Your interest rate is 5% per annum, but it's compounded monthly. So your interest is 0, 0, 5, but it's compounded monthly. Okay, and it says calculate the balance of the count on the 30th of November 2012. Okay, so do you agree that we've got, first of all, the 1st of January, that's January, through to, okay, let's do this, January through to January 2011. So it's 2010 to 2011, and then another January 2012. And then we've got till the 30th of November, 30th of November. So what it means is it doesn't include the 1st of December. So obviously that there is 12, that there is 12, but then we've got how many payments? We've got, um, it's on the 1st of January. So it's going to be um, end of January. So it's going to be January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, and November, but not December. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So it's 11. So you can see that the number of months is actually just short of three years. So it is going to be 36 months, 35 months, 35, three, yeah, 35 months. Okay. Now, what you need to understand is this. When you compound something monthly, you need to actually divide your interest rate by 12 because that interest is actually stated per annum. The interest rate is stated per annum, but it's compounded monthly. So you need to take the compound interest value and divide it by 12 because it's compounded monthly. We didn't do that earlier because it was always compounded annually. Yeah, it says the compound rate was 
4.25%. Um, uh, 4.25% per annum, and it's never once said that it was compounded monthly, and then they just said it was due after 30 months. Similarly, in the next example, uh, no, where was it? No, okay, no, that was it. Okay, fine. So, what we've got, we've got I is equal to 0 0.05 over 12 because of the compounded monthly. And then we count the months, okay, not the years. So therefore, the formula now becomes A is equal to P, which is 10,000, and then it's 1 plus the 0 0.05 all over 12 to the power of 35, okay, because it's 35 months. And now we need to pop that into our calculator. So let's work that out. So we've got 10, 1, 2, 3, multiplied by 1, 1, plus the fraction of 0 0.5. 0.05 and I'm hoping by now that you understand that this is 0.05 because this is 5% which needs to be converted into a decimal so we take our 5 and we divide by 100 which is why we get the 0, 0.05 okay all over 12 because it's monthly um, close brackets to the power of 35 and then that equals 1156 rand and 65 cents sorry that's a one so it needs to be fixed so that's not 1000 it's 10,000 um, let's go back down and let's go along sorry that was 10,000 not 1000 so let's just fix that if this uh, calculator is so slow, I might actually have to, I don't know, build a glacier. Okay, let's try it now. Equals. Better. 11,566.53. So that is 11,566,53. So that is the balance at the end of November 2012 after they've received 5% interest per annum compounded monthly. So it's not a huge amount of interest, you have to understand. Okay. Right. Then it says, how many years will it take the investment for an investment earning 5% per annum compound interest to double in value? Okay, so I kind of hinted at this. Um, sorry, we kind of hinted at this while... Um, when I did the last lesson with you on Monday, that we often get asked things about doubling, okay? So we're going to do compound interest, so it's going to A is equal to P, 1 plus I to the power of N. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to let the amount, the investment, let the investment value of P equal X. Then do you agree the amount we get out? The amount we get out is 2X, okay? I is the interest rate, and it's compounded per annum, so we don't have to worry about this, it's just 0, 0, 5. and they want to know how long it will take for the investment to double. So therefore, what do we want? We want N, we want N. So we need to substitute these values into this formula, and you'll see what happens, you get 2X is equal to X 1 plus 0, 0, 5, all to the power of n. Okay, now remember what I said to you on Monday, that the reason this is cool is that these cancel, okay, and you end up just with 2 is equal to 1 plus 0, 0, 5 to the power of n. So 2 is equal to 1, 0, 5 to the power of n. Okay, and then unfortunately you need to do some logs which again, I'm not 100% sure how this question can be in the grade 10 exam because <clears throat> you guys haven't done logs. But basically the way it works is this, and I'm going to show it to you. There's a shortcut, 
Okay, there's an easy shortcut. The shortcut says if you've got 2 to the 3 equals 8, then log 8 base 2 is equal to 3. Okay, so if this is the 2 and that's the 3 and that's the 8 in this analogy, then do you agree that log, and this will be the 8, is 2, base 1 comma 0, 5 is equal to n. So all we have to do now is put that in our calculator, okay? So again, this is a question from a grade 10 exam paper, so I'm not ex sure what they're expecting of you guys, because I would be surprised that you got this, because this is logs, and logs is only in grade 12. But anyway, let's just go through it. So it's going to be, um, you choose the this, Wait, where is it? There's a log that has, there it is. You choose that log, okay? The one that means you can change the base. This becomes one comma zero five, and that's all two, and then you go equals, equals, and it's 14.2. 21 years. So n is going to be 14.21 years. So it's going to take 14.21 years for the for this investment to double if you've only got 5% compound interest. Okay, which is a really long time to wait for investment to double. Right. <clears throat> now back to inflation rates. Okay. Um, in fact, we haven't done any questions on inflation rates today, so let's do this one. It says, in a certain country, the rate of inflation has remained unchanged for the past six years. Wow. Currently, a roll of wine gums costs seven rand. Okay. So, wine gums currently costs seven rand. Okay, seven rand. Six years ago. The wine gums cost four rand fifty. Okay, what is the rate of inflation as a percentage in this country? <clears throat> okay, so remember that this is compound interest. Okay, so what are we saying? We're saying that this rate of inflation has not changed at all. Okay, and remember that inflation is a compound interest formula because of the fact that it's based on the previous the previous year's amount of money, okay? So we've got A is equal to P, 1 plus I to the N. When in this case, N is obviously the six years, P is the amount of money the wine gums cost before, okay? So in this case, P is 4 and 50. The A is the amount of money the wine game is now cost, which is 7. And we're working out the compound interest because obviously this interest rate hasn't changed, therefore we can just use this I. So we can say that 7 is equal to 4, 5, 1 plus I to the 6. Okay. So do you agree, therefore, I can say 7 divided by 4, 5 is equal to 1 plus i to the 6. So to find the 1 plus i, do you agree I can find the sixth root of both sides? So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go 1 plus i is equal to the sixth root of this. So we're going to clear this and we're going to go sixth root shift. That's a cube root. Let's try again. Um, there it is. Shift. There we go. Sixth root. Six of the bracket, I mean a fraction, and that is seven over four point five equals, and that's one comma zero seven six. One comma zero seven six. So if we subtract one from both sides, you agree we get naught. 0, 0,076 equals I, but they want it as a percentage, so what do we do? We need to multiply that by 100. So that's 0, 0, 076 multiplied by 100 is going to be 7,6%. So the rate of inflation in this country for the past six years has been 7.6%. Okay, right. 
Let's look at another question. Okay, it says a couple buys furniture for 50,000 Rand. Okay, they put down a cash deposit of 20% and pay off the balance using a higher purchase agreement. Remember, this is simple interest then. Over four years, the institution charges interest at 10% per annum and a monthly insurance fee of 75 Rand. Calculate the couple's monthly repayments. Okay, <clears throat> so the first thing we need to do is work out the total amount of money that they're going to have to pay. Okay, and then we divide by the number of months that they are, and then we add the 75 Rand. Okay, so that seems a bit much, so let's think about this. First of all, we've got this 50,000, right? We need to minus the deposit, right? And then that is going to give us what is owed. We're going to use that to find out um, the total owed over four years. Okay. And then divide that by 48 months to get the monthly bill. But then what do we have to do to that monthly bill? We need to then add the insurance fee, the insurance fee to get the monthly repayment, the monthly repayment. Okay, do you understand? So let's do that first. Let's do the 5,000 minus, the 50,000 minus deposit. So the deposit is 20, 20%, okay? So obviously we need to find out what 20% of 50,000 Rand is. Okay, so let's do that. So let's get our calculator out and we're going to go 0.2 times 50 and then 1, 2, 3 equals 10,000 Rand. So the deposit is going to be 10,000 Rand, right? So therefore, how much is left? Well, 50,000 Rand minus 10,000 Rand is 40,000 Rand. So now I'm going to erase this bit because we've done this bit. So the amount that's owed is 40,000 Rand. That's what's owed is the 40,000 Rand. But now we need to know how much we're going to owe or pay back over the four years with our interest rate. Okay, so now we've got A is equal to P, it's higher purchase, so it's one plus I N, right? We've got 10% per annum, the original is 40,000, the P. We've got 10%, so it's one plus naught comma one, multiplied by four years, Okay, because it's 10% per annum. So we're going to multiply that by 4, okay, which is going to be 40,000 multiplied by 1, 4. Okay, so let's do that. So it's 40, 1, 2, 3 multiplied by 1, 4 equals, equals 56,000. So the total amount of money that we have to pay back is 56,000 Rand. But we've got four years to do that. So now we've worked out what that is. So what we're going to do is take our 56,000 and we're going to divide by 48. So if we divide by 48, we get 56,000 divide by 48. And what do we end up with? We end up with 1,166 Rand and 67 cents. 1,166 Rand and 67 cents. But that would be the monthly payment just on this. But now they would have to pay a monthly insurance fee of 75 Rand. So that's this bit here that we have to do. So now we're going to add the insurance fee. It's a nice question, this, eh? Nice detailed question. So it's 7, 6, 6 and 5 is 11, carry 1. 6 and 7 is 13, plus 1 is 14. That's a 1 and that's a 1. So, let's talk about this. That can't be right. There must be a 2. Okay, so this is the amount of money that the couple are paying off on their furniture for the next four years. So let's talk about this, okay? Let's again say, right, they bought furniture of 50,000 Rand to dish. Awesome. They paid a deposit of 10,000 Rand, that's what 20% is, 
and they end up owing 40,000 Rand. This 40,000 Rand, they have to pay off on a higher purchase agreement, which is simple interest, over four years, and it's 10% per annum, okay? So we work out that in total, the, this 40,000 Rand plus the interest over the four years gives you 56,000 Rand, right? But now, so we work that out, so then we say, okay, fine, but now this 56,000 Rand is divided by the four years, but it's monthly payments. So it's four times 12, which is 48. So we take the 56,000, we divide it by 48, and we get 1,166 Rand and 67 cents. And then they say, but hang on, they demand that we pay 75 Rand insurance fee. So we add the 75 Rand insurance fee in on and we end up with 1,241 Rand and 67 cents. So the amount of money that they're paying for on the furniture per month is 1,241 Rand and 67 cents, which is quite a lot of money. Just out of interest, if we take, oh, I need a calculator, if we take this 1,241 rounding on, 1,2,4,1,0.67, and we times it by 48. Ugh. And then we add 10,000 to it. And then we press the SD button. Do you see that they're paying an extra 20,000 Rand? They bought furniture for the value of 50,000 Rand and they're paying 19,600 Rand and 16 cents for the total over the four years. They're paying an extra 19,600 Rand and 16 cents. It's a lot of money. So they're paying 70,000 Rand about, just short of 70,000 Rand for their furniture. So for this reason, um, I know it's easy to say and hard to do, but for this reason, it's actually better for you not to buy things like furniture um, on higher purchase, okay? I know it's easier said than done, but <clears throat> cars, okay, unless you've got the amount of, uh, unless you've got, I know it's difficult to get into a new flat, you want some furniture that you can actually sleep on and live on and everything else, that's fine, and if you've got the money, that's fine, but paying 50,000 Rand or buying furniture for 50,000 Rand and end up paying just short of 70,000 Rand for that same furniture, it's just a little bit crazy, so I would like to suggest that you guys be aware of the fact that these people are out to make money, obviously, and the higher purchase seems like a nice idea for you guys, but in fact, what's actually happening, they're not being nice to you, and it doesn't matter if they say, oh, we put the payments off for three months, they're still going to get their money back, okay? In fact, they're probably going to get more money because they're going to be charging you interest during those three months when you don't pay. Okay. Right, and you know what? It's time. So we will start the statistics on, when do I see you again, guys, again, Monday. So we'll start the statistics of this lesson on Monday. Have a great day.